hello students i hope you all are doing well today so today we are going to learn something about plagiarism now this topic plagiarism is very important for you because whenever you are going to write an academic essay you need to avoid plagiarism you need to take care of plagiarism and in addition when you are going to write your final thesis at the end of your course ms or me uh, most probably you will be submitting your thesis on turnitin and you need to produce a plagiarism report so our today's topic is very important now everyone in education knows that plagiarism is something to be avoided but not everyone is sure precisely what it is now these notes will help you to understand more fully what plagiarism is and equally important how you can develop practices to avoid it so these notes are going to help you our today's lecture is going to help you to understand what plagiarism is and different types of plagiarism and how we can avoid plagiarism uh we'll i'll be dividing in, it into three parts so our today's part is about plagiarism what it is actually intentional or accidental plagiarism is perceived as a specific form of cheating which usually occurs when a student is working independently on an assignment now this assignment can be essays can be reports can be presentations or dissertations now <clears throat> plagiarism is plagiarism whether it is intentional or accidental intentional plagiarism is when you know what plagiarism is and you uh, you steal somebody else ideas and you produce uh, it as your own but what is accidental plagiarism now accidental plagiarism might occur when you do not really understand how to properly paraphrase quote and cite your research not knowing the proper method of documentation can result in misattributing someone else words or ideas as your own so it plagiarism can be intentional it can be accidental but in both cases it is plagiarism which needs to be avoided now what is plagiarism actually uh, plagiarism can have more than one definitions but most of the people agree to the following definition so it is the practice of taking someone else work or ideas and passing them off as one's own so in simple words it is an intellectual theft but in this theft you do not steal the property of people but you steal the intellectual property the ideas the opinions of the people and you produce them as your own now this means taking other people's work which is intellectual property of those people and incorporating it into your own work without acknowledging the original source of your information or ideas now keep in mind i'm not going to say that you are not going to refer other people you're not going to include other people's opinion or ideas in your essay as a matter of fact you have to your essay has to be supported it has to be backed up uh, with uh, other people's opinion and ideas but the problem occurs when you use others opinion and you do not give credit to them so you have to use others opinion and ideas uh in order to support what you are saying however you need to give full credit to those people so you have to acknowledge 
the original source of your information or ideas. Example of other people's work can include anything from internal from I'm sorry from internet sources, the spoken word, graphics, data, and written text. It can be anything, it can be something that you have taken from any internet source. Somebody has spoken something, has delivered a lecture, for example, a teacher has delivered a lecture, and then you have copied those words, you, co you have copied that lecture word for word. It can be graphics of other people, data which is gathered by other people, and written text. Examples of plagiarism include Now, what is plagiarism actually? There can be different examples. I'm going to give you a few examples which can be included as which could be included in plagiarism. First, the inclusion in your work of extracts from another person's work without the use of quotation marks and or acknowledgement of the original source or sources. So what you have done you have taken the exact words of some other person and you have used those words in your own work without using quotation marks. Keep in mind if you are going to uh, if you are going to give uh, the exact words of somebody else uh, those sentences should be in quotation marks and you have to acknowledge the original source as well. This is first example of plagiarism. Second, the summarizing of another person's work without acknowledgement. In first case, you have copied the other person's words, exact words, and you have not used quotation marks and you have not acknowledged the original source. In the second example, what you have done, <coughs> you have read a chapter of somebody else or you have read a page and you have summarized that page in your own words. Now, when you have summarized it in your own words, the words are yours. However, the ideas are not yours. So even if you have summarized somebody else's words and you have written it in your own words, you need to acknowledge that these, is, that these are not your ideas. The words are yours, but the idea is not yours. So in this case, you have to acknowledge the original source. Third example, the substantial use of the ideas of another person without acknowledgement. The substantial means of considerable importance, size or worth. <coughs> so some, you have taken a considerable size, uh, you have taken an important idea an important chunk of idea of somebody else and you have not acknowledged you have not acknowledged the original source you have not acknowledged the uh, the original writer this is also plagiarism next example is copying the work or ideas of another student with or without the student's knowledge or agreement now for example if the whole class is given uh, a task or an assignment and you copy somebody else some other students ideas without his or her knowledge or without his or her agreement that will also be included as plagiarism as a matter of fact even if the other students agree you have got an agreement with them or they know that uh, you have taken their ideas it is still going to be plagiarism. Now this type of plagiarism is called collusion. Uh, we'll be talking about collusion later on. The next example is submitting work you have already gained credit for. Now this might be interesting for you and this might be surprising as well. It's not always others. For example, you got an assignment and you've worked on that assignment, you've put, put efforts and you have submitted that assignment 
to your teacher. Now in next module in some other course a similar assignment is given to you. Now you have already submitted that type of assignment. So if you think that now this is you're not going to steal others ideas. Uh, these are your, these were your ideas and you uh, made efforts to do that assignment. So this is your assignment. You keep in mind you cannot resubmit your assignment for any other course. Because the reason because you have already gained credit for that you have already got marks for that assignment. So if the same assignment or the similar assignment is given to you again you have to write an other assignment you are, you are not going to submit the previous assignment on the same topic. That is also plagiarism. Now the key element of a submitted assignment is that it should be your own work entirely with all use of any resources appropriately acknowledged. For a group project this would mean that the work should only be produced by members of the agreed group. Now the assignment can be an individual assignment. Sometimes the teacher can give you a group task or a group assignment. When you are given group assignments, you have got different groups in your class. Only the groups of your members, I'm, I'm sorry, only the members of your group is your group actually. So you cannot take help from other students. So the work that you have produced, it's, it should be the work of only those members of group that you have in your own group. Okay. So even if it, it is uh, the teacher has given you a group task or group assignment, it's only about your own group members. So you're not going to uh, take the help from others from other groups or other students. Or if you uh, copy other students ideas, that's also going to be plagiarism. Now many modules now require that you sign a declaration on an assignment cover sheet. Uh, and most of the European countries, uh, uh, now this is, a, this is a, a very normal practice that before submitting an assignment, you have to submit this statement. Now this statement says, this assignment was prepared by me, your name, a student on module this at the university, the name of your university. And this is entirely my own individual work. All resources have been acknowledged. <coughs> Sorry and it has not been submitted previously for any other academic award. So in most of the cases you have to submit this statement along with your assignment that the work which you have produced it is your own work and you have not done any plagiarism. Now why might plagiarism occur actually? There are many reasons why students plagiarize. Uh, we are going to discuss those reasons one by one. First one is when a student is not fully aware of what plagiarism is. This is what that accidental plagiarism that we were talking about. So you have copied from an internet source just because you don't you are not aware of plagiarism you don't know what plagiarism is second when a student does not fully understand the conventions required in, in, in academic writing now academic writing has certain conventions and one of those conventions is that you need to avoid plagiarism you cannot have plagiarism third it can be a panic response to poor time management when an easy deadline is looming. So sometimes students, uh, most of the students, they start working on an assignment uh, at the 11th hour and then when they feel that they're running out of time and that they don't have much time. So in response to that poor time management, what they do, they plagiarize. 
next reason if a student feels a desperate need not to be seen as a failure and so copies to try to ensure success now sometimes what happens students they want to have a good perception a good image of their of uh, the, of uh, himself and they they feel that if they do plagiarism and they good they get good marks uh, other people other students would have a good idea about them because uh, this is the criteria uh, uh, unfortunately in most of the cases that the student those who have got good marks they are considered better students next it can be a response to different academic traditions now there might be some cultures where plagiarism uh, is not prohibited uh, plagiarism uh, can be done i don't think uh, right now we have any cultures or any places where where uh, plagiarism is allowed but perhaps you know a decade or a couple of decades back uh, when this uh, we didn't have these uh, uh, the softwares like turn it in so uh, in some of the cases people they did uh, do plagiarism because they thought they would get away with that or it can be a response to information overload and the ease with which text can be cut and pasted from the other electronic documents or pages on the internet now, this is very simple as what mostly undergraduate students do uh, they've got this copy and paste formula so they read the things on internet uh, there is bulk of bulk of information so what they do actually they just copy and paste or it can be an attempt not to displease a tutor sometimes you want to make your, your tutor happy you want to impress your tutor so you want to write as good as possible so in in that desperate effort you copy the things from internet you steal others ideas you take others opinions and then you produce them as your own the student may copy out text word for word during note taking and then forgot i'm sorry forget to reword paraphrase the text for the assignment sometimes there are certain students who keep noting down the lectures the lectures lecture and they copy the same lecture in their assignment even the 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 do not paraphrase it the student may not be aware of how to paraphrase properly this can be one of the reasons that uh, you know that this is plagiarism but you do not know how to paraphrase your uh, your assignment you have read someone else ideas uh, but you don't know how to how to write the same thing in your using your own words we'll talk about paraphrase in uh, in next lectures sometimes of course plagiarism is a it's a detriment and deliberate attempt to gain the credit for the module without doing the work now this is perhaps the the most serious case where students uh, they know that they are they are doing plagiarism and just uh, to get good marks uh, they deliberately knowingly purposely they do this plagiarism so that they can get uh, good marks in that assignment if plagiarism is deemed to have taken place the reasons why it has happened are not taken into consideration uh, it reminds me one a very good saying that ignorance of law is no excuse so if plagiarism has taken place it is plagiarism and it is an intellectual theft in any case you cannot justify you cannot have any excuse for the plagiarism that you have done so if you are not aware of plagiarism and then you have taken somebody else ideas and you have produced them on as your own and say that you were not aware of plagiarism that's not an excuse is actually like 
uh, when you have broken a traffic law and then you you're telling the cop that uh, I mean you didn't know that law so ignorance of that law is no excuse likewise if you have plagiarized just because you were not aware of plagiarism it's no excuse at all plagiarism is always plagiarism plagiarism is always perceived as cheating and it's dealt with through university procedures now keep in mind that if you have plagiarized an assignment uh, all the universities different universities have different uh, different procedures they'll definitely take uh, an action if you have plagiarized a thing now that action may vary from university to university it is seen as not only cheating the university but also cheating other students you, you have not cheated the university you have cheated other students also your other classmates who have put in efforts who have uh, who have done uh, a very good job uh, and they have produced their own essays their own thesis and if you have cheated you have cheated those classmates as well however there are more reasons than the negative ones now there might be positive reasons for not plagiarizing there might be some negative reasons for not plagiarizing what could be negative reasons uh cheating others so if you are not plagiarizing just because it is cheating others this is a negative uh, uh this is a negative uh, motivation or just because this is unfair just because you are not uh, plagiarizing just because uh, if you plagiarize possibly uh, your a uh, discovery will lead to a disciplinary action uh, so these are negative uh, motivations not to plagiarize but there might be some positive reasons negative uh, reasons are like if you do something good and you're doing something good just because you want to avoid uh, hell you don't want to go to hell now this is a negative reason there's a negative motivation a positive motivation can be that you are doing something good just because you want to please god just because you want to go to heaven now these are positive motivations so there are certain positive reasons why you should not be plagiarizing first reason is pride in your work now, students should be able to take pride in their work and in the achievements they have attained this considerable satisfaction in knowing that you are developing your writing skills the work you have submitted is your own all resources are appropriately acknowledged and the marks obtained reflect your own effort and abilities so if you have put in efforts and you have submitted an assignment you will have a pride in your work this is like uh when we cheat in exams and we we get very good marks uh we are never happy we are never satisfied because we cannot take pride uh in that but if you have got a simple b grade but you have you have, you have never cheated you have put in efforts you worked hard so you have a pride you can then probably tell people that you have got b grade but if you have got a1 grade and it's because of cheating you will never take pride in that so if you have made efforts you have not plagiarized you have not stolen others ideas uh, and you have uh, taken all the all those steps uh, it will give you a sense of pride it will give you a sense of achievement that just yes, you have you have done it on your own so this is first positive reason for not plagiarizing second is learning it will not be possible to learn properly if you are not completing the required course work properly for example if you are required to write an essay or literature review you will not just learn about the subject you will also be developing a whole range of abilities such as literature searching time management organization analysis evaluation developing coherent arguments referencing academic writings so there is whole 
there's a lot of learning in it. Uh, so if uh, I always believe that process is more important than the end result. If you have taken ideas from others, you can even ask some, some other person to write uh, that academic essay for you or even thesis for you. But that is not going to lead you in learning anything. <laughs> you have not learned anything. Uh, so the process of learning is very important. You, uh, you would have missed all these things. You would have missed how to develop a whole range of abilities like how to search literature, uh, time management, organization, analysis, evolution. So if you're doing on your own, you learn all these skills. If you have stolen others' ideas, if you have taken help from someone else, if somebody else has written that essay for you, uh, then no learning will take place. It is much more difficult to develop these aspects of academic study without practicing them and getting tutor feedback. So you write something, you put an effort, you go through the process and then you go to your tutor for feedback and the teacher gives you feedback, you improve. Now this is the cycle of learning. So if you, uh, if you are plagiarizing, you'll miss this cycle of learning. Completing your assignment provides you with an important opportunity to learn about your discipline area and communicate your understanding to others. So these are all skills that you'll learn uh, while submitting your essay, while working on your assignment. But if you are involved in, in any illegal thing like plagiarism, you will miss all these, uh, all these uh, skills. Third, positive reason, real level of attainment. It is possible, although unlikely, that someone might plagiarize widely and not be discovered throughout their university career. Though there are very rare chances, but it might be possible that you have plagiarized, you, have, you, are, you were uh, involved in plagiarism and then you got away with it, perhaps throughout your university career, which is very unlikely actually. But even if you manage to do it, however, the, discre the, the discovery that the apparent attainment does not match their real abilities may then become obvious when they find a job. So you can deceive some of the people some of the time, all of the people some of the time, but not all of the people all of the time. <clears throat> if you have done your assignments through plagiarism, you have not learned those skills, so you might have a temporary achievement, but later on when you go out in practical uh, and, and the job market to find a job, it will be very obvious that the grade that you have got, the degree you have got, uh, you're not worth of it. And you apparently you don't have those skills, those uh, that competency, that ability that you should have after having got that degree that will be very obvious. So it is not worth the risk and worry this could cause later on. So these are three positive reasons why you should not be involved in plagiarism. So that's all for, uh, for today's lecture. In our next lecture, we'll learn plagiarism in practice, what is it, and some other topics uh, which are related to plagiarism. Um, I hope this will do. Thank you very much.